Hey, this is Bryce, and thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel, Jack of Trades. In this video, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to assemble this Bandai uh, plastic model kit of a cup of noodle um, soup. <laughs> soup cup. Uh, it's a little bit nonsensical, but it's kind of, it's actually quite a fun kit to build. Um, and so why not do a build video on something silly like this? Uh, I don't even know what to do with it when it's done being built, but it's something that I can check off on that, uh, that bucket list of mine. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and flip the camera around and get into the build video. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so we're gonna get into this little model build that I got for Christmas. Uh, this is the Bandai Cup of Noodle Kit. Um, but before I get started on this, I kinda wanna go over some of the tools that I use. And I am not a model builder. Um, I don't really have the patience for all the painting and whatnot. Um, I used to build models as a kid, but I kind of haven't really done it in a while. I prefer uh, things that move and you can drive, so that's why I gravitate towards RC stuff. But I do actually enjoy the Bandai kits uh, because of the details and they're usually... Um, they The kits are designed so that you can kind of play with them and move them and pose them. Um, so that's why I do like the Bandai kits. Um, but getting into the tools, um, you'll want to have you know a couple of different styles of razor blades depending on prefer preference. All right, so this is kind of a typical Exacto um, razor with a number ten blade on it. Um, I like to use this for cleaning up edges and kind of shearing or planing um, little bits of plastic that sit proud and it's hard to get to. Um, and then this is a this is a surgical scalpel. It's a Swan Morton uh, number three um, with a number eleven blade on it. And these are just really sharp. But they're not very. Um, they're very because they're sharp. They're also very brittle. Um, so you can't really use the tips for prying with. They tend to snap off pretty easily. Um, then I have a couple of different grits of emery boards. And these you can buy kind of in bulk um, with a variety of different grits. Um, so like this black one has different grits on each side. Uh, same with the blue and the pink I believe is feels the same on both sides. Nice set of tweezers. Um, I have big hands, big fingers, so I, I'm often using tweezers. Um, and actually that reminds me of something else that I like to use. So getting up in the years, I, I actually rely on these quite a bit. Um, they, they do help out tremendously when you're trying to look at those smaller parts. Um, even just looking at numbers on a um, parts tree, uh, these are uh, indispensable. <laughs> when it comes to side cutters, there's there's a large variety of, out there. Uh, basically, you want something that cuts flush. That's all you're trying to do. Um, and I don't really get into the... Um, the details of kind of rough cutting than finish cutting. Um, so kind of the, the high end side cutters are the, these God hands. Um, and these are, these are actually, they're, re they're really nice um, when it comes to, but you can see that there's not a lot of material on these tips and they are prone to breaking. So they have this nice little feature where you have the set screw on the back end, uh, which you can adjust for um, setting how far close it goes, because you don't want those two metal tips, you don't want your cutting edges to come in contact with each other, you just want a small amount of gap there. That basically, a gap um, is big enough to see light through, and you're not going to be able to see that on this camera. Um, but you don't, if, if you allow these tips to come into contact, you'll chip them. Um, and these are, so these are kind of the high-end cutters that, and these go for about $63 right now on Amazon. Um, and I don't use these very often, uh, just because they are delicate. Um, what I do use more often, especially on the Tamiya kits, are the Tamiya side cutters. Um, and these are, these are really nice cutters, they seem to hold up well. They are similar to the God Hands, they, there's not a lot of material on the tip. Um, but these have held up fine um, and these are about $24 on Amazon and then actually my kind of my go-to side cutters are these guys um, and you can there's 
a million different companies that make these. These happen to be by Heiko. Um, and these go for like six dollars each. Or you can, I, I think the last time I ordered them, I picked up like a five pack. Um, I didn't see the five pack on Amazon, but on, they have the three pack for eighteen bucks. And these are nice. They work. And they're you know if you ruin them, you, it doesn't matter. You can throw them away. I have a couple here to kind of get some examples. This one has a the, the tip has been. So I have this one here where the tip has been chipped. Um, and then at that point, once I lost that tip, I started using these on things that I otherwise wouldn't use them. So I'm starting to get uh, nicks in the cutting edges. Um, and these will eventually get worn down to the point of not being usable and they'll just get tossed. Um, this is, a, this is a, another Heiko from that lot. And, but I think what's most noticeable about this one is that the, the cutting edges are not flush. Um, there's a nice little step there. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say it's about half a millimeter to three quarters of a millimeter step. Um, so I would not want to use these for cutting parts off plastic trees. They're probably fine for wire cutting maybe? I don't know. I just, I might be able to even go in and kind of tweak these tips to realign it. Or you can actually probably regrind it as well if you don't, as long as you don't put too much heat into it and lose the temper. But we're not going to be using these for this kit today. I think for today I'm going to use my Tamiya cutters. Um, I'll keep these just as a backup. But these are just kind of examples of when you buy cheap, uh, what can go wrong with them. Your tips break. Uh, they don't cut flush. Um, so you kind of get what you pay for. Um, so I think the Tamiya is a good middle of the road solution. Um, but again, these are relatively delicate. Um, when I was doing the Baja build, I was using these. I wasn't using um, the Tamiya's just because it's bigger, b bigger screws that you're cutting off. And without with that, um, I guess we can move into the unboxing and building of this kit. All right, so these kits don't typically come sealed. There's these little plastic straps they put around them. I like on the box, uh, <laughs> the warning label. It says plastic model kit, do not eat. This item is a plastic model kit, it cannot be eaten. Please be careful not to accidentally swallow or eat it. And probably they're worried about the little bits of food in there, not necessarily the kit itself. Um, but it's just kind of a interesting um, <laughs> note. And this is a one-to-one -one model, in case there's any confusion. <laughs> Alright, so we got all our parts laid out and we are ready to start the uh, build. Let's find step one. Uh, the notes are interesting. Here they talk about uh, pre cutting the part um, and then doing a final cleanup cut on it. Um, but <laughs> please know that assembling the kit in three minutes may be difficult. So I think they're telling you not to rush it. Even though it is a fairly simple kit, they don't want you rushing it. Alright, so we start by putting on this little red ring. And there's a hole here that we're trying to line up with the pin here. this guy here and there's a little notch here that lines up with the notch in the red ring the details on these kits is incredible they've they we have this kind of mold line it's not a mold line from the plastic part it's a mold line of the styrofoam cup that you'd see on a styrofoam cup so they basically molded a mold line into or a, yeah a parting line into the kit itself and they're making sure that as you stack up these three pieces they line up so and this is this is Bandai and the detail is amazing on these kits. Look at that. 
That's the other nice thing about the Bandai kits is, I mean, I don't mess around with painting them. They still come out looking really nice because the coloring on the plastics is, is great. Um, so look at that, you get this nice little golden white pattern um, just from the pieces. All right, so that is step one, the top of the cup. Now we get into step two, which is the, the lower cup section. Okay, and that is step two, the bottom of the soup cup. All right, so getting into step three, uh, we'll be assembling the cup itself. I like, you know, as you assemble these pieces, the, the parts just start to pop. Like as soon as those letters drop in, it's just like, wow, look at that. This is really cool. Now we assemble the cup. And there we have made a cup. <laughs> a styrofoam cup that get thrown away that gets thrown away by the millions we've made a model of. <laughs> I hope everyone can appreciate how nonsensical this is. <laughs> but it's all in fun, right? <laughs> all right, so that completes step three. Um, now we move into step four, which is the uh, noodles. <laughs> ah, the suspended noodle cluster can be seen when the front panel is removed. So that front panel is meant to be removed so that you can look at the noodle cluster below. Interesting. All right, that's step four that we'll get started on. All right, so there's our noodle assembly. And that just drops into the cup. It doesn't look like it has any particular orientation. So that is step four. We got the noodles in there. So step five is the decals. <laughs> it's just crazy, right? So here's kind of a before, after I put the stickers on. I already put one sticker on. So I got one sticker right there. And then we'll just fill in with stickers and you can kind of see um, what it'll look like after. Okay, and that's after the decals. So, yeah, you can put stickers on the shrimp pieces too, to give it some coloring. I suppose this is in lieu of painting them. That's, uh, that's pretty crazy. I don't even know if you can see the difference in these guys. Nice helping of green onions. Ready to wine and dine. Let's put the lid on it. So 
So in closing, it's it's actually kind of a fun kit to do. Um, I think if you do one of these, you'll appreciate kind of the precision just in the, the model pieces. Um, the labels are kind of confusing in the sense that uh, you're putting stickers on plastic insert pieces already, so it kind of, what's the point of doing plastic insert pieces? But at the same point, what's the point of doing a model of a cup of noodle? There is no point to any of this. It's just for fun. And it's to make a, it's a kit just to, just because we could, not because we should. <laughs> um, so it, it's a fun kit to do. It takes, it, I think it took me about an hour uh, to do it, and that's probably slowed down a little bit just because I'm trying to get things neat and nice and we're doing it for the video. Um, a normal person could probably get it done in 30 minutes or so. Um, so yeah, I think it'd be a fun kit uh, for anyone really who likes to assemble stuff. And it'd be a nice little shelf dust collector in the shop or your hobby room. Thanks for tuning in and watching to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, take care.